Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 13th. First up, this was sent in by Brenda J. And thank you for all the contributions from everybody this week. This was a really nice show because I got a lot of contributions. This is from CosmosMagazine.com. Flat battery new prototype turns waste heat into electricity. Um, not a base, not a real new idea because I'd featured before about a camping pot, a cooking pot that you could take camping or even use on a regular stove. And by heating it up to a pretty high temperature, you could produce enough electricity to power a USB device or charge a USB, um, use it as a USB charger for a smartphone, something like that. But the real breakthrough in this is the fact that they can do it at lower temperatures. Uh, I'll read a little bit of the article here. Back in May, we reported on the discovery of a new material with unique properties that may make it possible to recycle heat from computers and cars as electric power. Now another team at MIT has developed a device that can generate electricity from ambient heat. Picture a device that can produce electricity using nothing but the ambient heat around it. Well, I think they're kind of stretching it with that. Thanks to research published by the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, this scenario is a step closer. The cell only needs low-grade waste heat less than 100 degrees C to charge batteries and is a significant step forward. Um, similar to other devices which require an external circuit for charging or high temperatures as like 300 degrees centigrade. 100 C is still talking about boiling point of water, so we're not talking about super low temperatures, but you're talking about a device that you could probably put on maybe your... Uh, um, your flue to your your chimney flue to your uh, fireplace to your uh, the uh, exit pipe to your hot water heater your furnace stuff like that and it also needs heating and cooling cycles to be able to work efficiently too but that's no problem when you're talking about um, a, a pipe like that it, it heats up and cools down just in normal operation and it's just wasted heat anyway so we're not talking about powering your house or anything like that we're talking about the amounts of energy to recharge USB devices but being able to do it with a heat and energy that's basically lost already anyway and um, you could even use something like your car to your exhaust manifold on your car or uh, even places that are less hot than that just because they have a change in temperature from 100 degrees C and then cool off you can basically go through all kinds of unlimited charge and discharge cycles and uh, power up your small smart devices and tablets and stuff like that so I think it's pretty good technology and we're seeing more and more of this um, I like this kind of thing where it's almost like getting something for nothing because it's waste heat anyway that just goes up into the atmosphere. Um, this is something I caught myself back in December 10th. The Pirate Bay was raided in, uh, well, let's see, I'll just read the first part of it too. So this is how it may end for the Pirate Bay. Two of its founders in prison, the offices reportedly raided its website, bounced from the Internet. The file-sharing site, which shot into existence in 2003 and at one time commanded 22 million years, has now crashed to a new depth which it will not emerge. Uh, let me go down to the raid here. This was, that was when the Swedish police launched a crackdown on a server room in Greater Stockholm, said a police statement reported by local. This is in connection with violations of copyright law, and I, it goes on and on. You can read the article, and as usual, all the links to everything will be down below. But uh, basically the story is they're trying again to shut down the Pirate Bay, and maybe as far as the original one, they may actually succeed in doing this, but guess what? On the Internet, uh, two days later, I went to another site, and you can type this in. It's called oldpiratebay.org, and if you're, if you're somebody that in the past has used BitTorrent sites for stuff, and I did quite a bit, although I guess in the last two years I haven't used them that much, but um, this is an old friend, IsoHunt. They've actually resurrected a tribute to the uh, Pirate Bay, and it's not just a tribute page. The searches actually work. People thought when it first came up online, um, and I saw Hunt posted it, that it was just nothing but a memorial tribute site. But you do the uh, little search bar, and it'll come up with the same links, and they look the same way as the old Pirate Bay. So um, they may try to stop it, but like they say, the more they try to stop it, the more it'll just pop up all around and. Uh, Nowadays, I think the reason why torrents are becoming more and more obsolete is you can find so much content online for little or nothing anymore. I mean, if you have an Amazon Prime account, um, Hulu, you don't even need to have a paid account, although you get a little bit more features with the paid account. Uh, a lot of people have Netflix like I do. And as far as even current TV shows, uh, for a lot of them, if you want to catch an episode or two, I've typed into YouTube. And uh, sometimes you got to find it before YouTube pulls it down, but sometimes they're up there for a week or two before YouTube knocks them down. So if you want to see current shows you can just do that with YouTube itself so but 
kind of nice in a way. I mean, Pirate Bay does seem kind of like an old friend. I remember especially uh, real obsolete movies and stuff like that that nobody would even release on DVD or VHS or stuff like that. Sometimes you could score some things like that that uh, just couldn't be found anywhere else by going to a BitTorrent site. But, uh, yeah, uh, kind of just uh, more or less uh, don't use it that much anymore because content's just so easy to find other ways. And this one comes from 1954 Shadow, my friend Bob. This is new shingled hard drives hold terabytes for pennies a gig. And let's see. Well, the last time most of us thought of shingles was when we were itchy in eighth grade. Seagate has been thinking of them as a way to store more data called shingled magnetic recording. There's a little video down below where you can see how it operates. Basically, it's just overlapping tracks so they can squeeze more information into a hard drive. Um, the one thing about this, though, that at the... Uh, in paragraph here just before the video, Seagate will ship the drives in January for $260 for 8 terabyte version. Considered the first 1 terabyte drives cost 375 in 2007. That's an impressive jump. Uh, I would have to say, if I jump over to my link on Amazon and look at the listing, and this is from Seagate itself, you can look at the listing of four different hard drives available. And the first one on the list I have here is Seagate Expansion 4 terabyte desktop external hard drive listed for a price of $125.99. So when you consider you can get two of those hard drives for $250, $252, let's call it, free shipping, you got 8 gigabytes right there, and you got modern, faster 3.0 hard drives for less than they're even talking about releasing this at. So why would you really want to pay for you know, a, a drive that's not quite as fast? So if they want to really talk about an 8 terabyte version and cheap storage, I think they're going to have to drop below $200 because it looks to me like they're competing against themselves and they're not going to be able to compete against themselves at that price. But, <clears throat> excuse me, the technology um, seems pretty good. The overlapping tracks part of it, if they can just uh, either get the price way down or get the speed a little bit more up. And next, this one is from, this is from my friend Brian West. This is, uh, I, I've covered similar devices to this. This is a website called XY Find It, or maybe it's Xi Find It, XYFindIt.com. And it's just basically a little, I don't know, call it like a thick poker chip type of device. And it's uh, just a locating device. You would stick it on items that you want to keep track of or that you lose on a regular basis. Uh, a little bit larger than some of the ones I reported on in the past. This is uh, about an inch and three quarters, so it's about one and a half times the width of a quarter and maybe about as thick as a stack of three or four quarters. Uh, the price is pretty reasonable. Let me actually go to the, you can go to the FAQ it's got here <clears throat> up at the top and uh, see that um, all you need basically is the device and then the application to work on your smartphone, and it's got uh, app, apps available for the uh, iPhone and for the Android both. Um, it has a, it uses a typical cell uh, battery, a little uh, watch type of battery, I guess, and it lasts for about six months. I would like to see the battery life be a, a little bit better than six months, more like a year would be better. But they're also talking about the range of it, and they said inside with obstructions it can be reliable up to about 100 feet, and then without ins obstructions it can reach uh, about 150 feet. That's pretty impressive there. I just don't like the fact of having to change the, the battery every uh six months and the fact of how big it is if they could get it down to about the size of a quarter or maybe two quarters stacked on top of each other I think that would be a little bit better because one thing I would like to see this used from is like uh, a lot of times I'll lay my keys down somewhere and not know where they are and the features are with this if the item gets too far away it'll send you an alert on your phone and then you can also send from your phone an alert to the little tag or chip or whatever you want to call it and it'll actually beep itself to tell you where the item is so yeah, another thing for people that are forgetful and lose a lot of items, uh, I believe there's something like, uh, let me see, we got a price list here. I saw this before. I think it's something like three three of them you can get for uh, 50 something dollars. Yeah, three pack for 54.95, so they're not expensive really. Uh, one is $21, but a three pack is 54, so you get a way better value. And if you want a seven pack, which I couldn't really believe you need much more than them unless you're doing them for some kind of a commercial service or something, seven pack for a uh, hundred bucks, ninety nine ninety five, you can call it. So, yeah, seems like a pretty decent deal to me. And next, uh, 
Oh, this is a good one, too. I got this just this morning before I went on the show. Bob, uh, Bob 1954 Shadow sent this to me. NASA receives $18 billion in omnibus spending bill. They actually got an increase over what they asked for themselves. NASA will receive $18 billion for 2015, more than half a billion dollars above the Obama, the Obama administration's original request under the terms of an omnibus spending bill released late December 9th. It is good with the uh, seeing the tests, which I reported on the TDD report about the Orion and uh, possible exploration to meteors and asteroids and then on to Mars. We really need to up the budget. Uh, I'm thinking more that the reason why this probably passed is because of the fact that we're looking kind of uh, embarrassed as a nation because supposedly being the nation that, you know, the only nation still that landed men on the moon, uh, basically we're going to be falling behind real fast compared to the European Space Agency and pretty soon even China and a lot of other countries are just going to pass us on by if we don't get on the ball. And as a matter of fact, I think even this $18 billion we're talking about, if we want to gear up to go to Mars, we're going to have to talk about even upping this quite a bit more in the future. I mean, this is a good start. And I will say that, you know, it's it's good to start this way, but uh, I would like to see it uh, be a little bit more than what it is now. But good that we, we are finally doing this for whatever reason. I would rather the Congress did it because they were interested in science, but I don't really see that with our Congress we have right now. Not a huge interest in science, but just don't want to be embarrassed to be a second or third rate nation in the space race. But, uh, you know, I'll take the money however we get it for NASA. So anyway, thank you everybody for watching. Take care everybody, and I will catch you next week.